at this point, I've felt really good this training session. As you can see, I hit 105 fairly smoothly, um, but leading up, everything's felt really good. I hit 110 here. Boom, not too bad. Um, but yeah, bodies felt good. Um, everything, like every single rep felt pretty smooth. And I haven't missed a rep since. I go up to 115 here, and this is my first miss. And really, if my first miss comes at 115, I'm feeling pretty good about the training session. So here we go. Yeah, I just kind of pop it forward a little bit at the top. Um, not So I come back here. And I kind of know what I had to fix because I took a look at that video. I just kind of had to stay over and push a little longer at the top. And I had a little press out there on the right elbow, but nothing too crazy. Um, so I probably should have stopped here, but I felt pretty good this day. So I decided to say, fuck it, and throw on 121, which is a all-time PR. That's a 6-kilo jump. Just a 5-kilo jump to 120 is a big jump but I decided to take the jump to 121 here just for shits and gigs and I'm just gonna let it play out. So as you saw that 121 did not go um, very well at all. Honestly before that lift that's kind of what I expected. Um, it just I wasn't in the tank that day. The strength just wasn't there. Um, so right now what I have are is a high hang snatch plus a full snatch, regular snatch, at um, I think 70% of what I my best single before. Um, I think I had eight sets of these. Um, so it's fairly light, just kind of grooving technique here. Um, and then I finish the day with some pulls and then with some um, push presses. But overall, pretty good training session here. The way snatches went, I can't really complain about anything. Um, I'm really happy with hitting 115. If I can hit 115 any given day, I know things are moving in the right direction. I can't get you out of my mind. It's like I feel it for the first time. Been thinking about you all night. I've been searching for this all my life. You're just my type. I've been looking for a boy who can treat me right. But your dark hair with those eyes so bright. They look into my soul and it sparks my life. Can I take you there? Take you there. Like it was the first time. Do you remember? Can I take you there? Back to when we felt like this was forever. Can I take you there? So I've had the opportunity to compete in Olympic lifting and powerlifting, and I'd say I've been reasonably successful at both. Now I've just written on this topic about training for powerlifting and Olympic lifting and doing so simultaneously, and I hope it turns out to be an ebook, and it should. And today I wanted to discuss a little bit about training for both. So I think it's easiest if we break it down into three levels um, in both sports. So you have your beginner, intermediate, and advanced lifters and powerlifting, Olympic lifting, and I think you can do so um, with lifters training for both. And I just kind of want to break down the sports in those levels right now. So when you're talking about a beginner athlete, you're typically talking about what I would classify as somebody who's been in either sport about either they're just beginning or up to a year. Some may still be at the beginner level after a year. It just depends on their overall dedication and their consistency through, those, um, through that time period. Um, a beginner in both sports, let's just break it down, Olympic lifting right now. A beginner in Olympic lifting is best off if they start with variations of the full lifts. They're probably not going to get a whole lot, of, a whole lot out of the full versions of the lifts right now. So if you give a beginner a snatch or a beginner a clean and jerk, they might be able to complete the lift, but they can't do so at a high enough level where they're actually going to get good development out of it. A beginner in Olympic lifting is best off um, training different broken down versions of the lifts. This might include a one third deadlift, which is just a pull from the floor up to the knee. Um, this includes various um, hangs, might be at the hip, might be at the knee, um, might be below the knee. Um, it might um, 
entail snatch balances. It might just entail overhead squatting, snatch deadlifting, clean deadlifting, and overhead pressing. Um, a beginner lifter in Olympic lifting is best off if they see these in their initial programming and later on down the, down the line, getting a little bit more specific with the lifts. Now, an intermediate in Olympic lifting is going to need more specificity of the full lifts. So an intermediate in Olympic lifting is somebody who's probably been in the sport one year up to maybe even four years. And I think most people are going to spend most of, the, most of their career at this intermediate level. And an intermediate lifter in Olympic lifting is someone that is probably com competing at your American Open Series events. Um, now I would say there's a lot of discrepancy in the talent at these events because they're sort of regional meets and you have, there's a lot of difference between a D session lifter at an American Open Series event and an A session lifter. And I would say, I would still say most athletes competing in American Open Series are still intermediate lifters with the, um, maybe your lifters in the A session, the top three, you might be able to classify those lifters as advanced. But again, the bulk of the sport of Olympic lifting is going to be intermediate level lifting. Now again, going back to training for these type of lifters, they're going to need more specificity of the Olympic lifts. Now they've gotten to a level where they can complete the full lifts and get something out of them, and that's going to further their development in those lifts. Um, an intermediate level lifter might also need um, a little bit more strength specific training. So they might need to actually get their squat up because um, an example of this would be somebody that can clean just a little bit less than their front squat. Um, so this type of lifter might be better served if they can get their leg strength levels up to where standing up with a clean isn't so taxing. Now again, for an intermediate level lifter, you still wanna give them some variations of the lifts and it's, so it's not just the full um, competition lifts every single day. Um, because again, if you get too specific, then you could be missing out on some weaknesses that you could further develop um, backing off a little bit of the specificity. But in general, an intermediate level lifter compared to the beginner lifter is going to need more specificity of the competition lifts. Now an advanced, liver, uh, an advanced lifter in Olympic lifting, and I will start this out with a disclaimer that I have not coached an advanced lifter in Olympic lifting throughout multiple training cycles. Now I've trained with a few advanced lifters and I've coached um, on and off some advanced lifters, but not through, I wasn't their head coach through multiple training cycles. So you can take this with a grain of salt, but I still want to discuss it. So an advanced lift, lifter in Olympic lifting um, is somebody that's been in the sport four plus years. A lot of these, some of these lifters might have, might have even been in the sport for 10 years. Now that's a lot of training volume over the years. I think one key when in training advanced lifters is that you have to keep them excited in the sport, excited about the sport, and you have to keep them training in a way where they're not going to break down because they have this such a huge accumulation of training volume beforehand. Um, in my experience, um, advanced lifters um, are kind of dealing with these long-term chronic, I don't want to call them injuries, but just different aches and pains that um, have accumulated through training the sport for so long. Now, an, an advanced Olympic lifter is going to just need a lot of specificity because Olympic lifting is a skill sport and they've dialed in their technique and skill so much that the only thing that's really going to get it better, and these are going to be very marginal increases in skill, is just doing the competition lifts and getting very specific. Now also, an advanced lifter might also benefit from um, various ver versions of the lift, lifts where you could overload them. An example of this would be behind the neck jerking or maybe lifts from blocks where they might be stronger above the knee. That way that overload might give them some extra strength on the specific lifts, the snatch and the clean and jerk from the floor. Now moving on to powerlifting. Beginners in powerlifting are going to need practice at the lifts. Now that's your back squat, your bench press, and your deadlift. Now for a beginner, I don't think they need an incredible, incredible amount of volume and intensity. I think a beginner could even benefit from just squatting the bar if they've never done a back squat before a um, hundred times in one training session, just the bar. Now let me back up, uh, back up a little bit. As same for Olympic lifting, a beginner in powerlifting is somebody that's just starting the sport and have probably been in it up to a year. Um, okay, now going back to the training part. I think a beginner in powerlifting needs practice of the skill 
of the back squat, bench press, and deadlift. And I think contrary to a lot of what people think out there, there is skill in your back squat, bench press, and deadlift. And the more you get better at that specific skill, the more you're going to, the more weight you are, um, have the ability to lift. Now, an Olympic lifter needs, or sorry, a power lifter needs practice at the skill right away, but they, you don't want to give them too much training volume and intensity of the competition list because they're so detrained and so um, they're not very technical in the lifts that they could break down pretty quick if you accumulate too much volume and overall load of these competition lifts. So I think a beginner in powerlifting is best served getting a lot of light weight practice reps with the back squat, bench press, and deadlift and accumulating most of their volume of training through various accessory lifts that's gonna help them develop some overall muscular conditioning and hypertrophy that's gonna set them up for later success down the road. These might include your dumbbell bench presses, split squats, um, various types of rows, maybe even some overhead pressing and whatnot, but stuff that's probably not gonna break them down quite as much as the full competition lifts. Now an intermediate in powerlifting, the same for an Olympic lifter, somebody that's been in the sport roughly one year up to four years. For powerlifting, maybe even three years. I see some advanced lifters in powerlifting because it's such a strength dominant sport that have only been in the sport for three years and are probably already at an advanced level. So training the intermediate and power in powerlifting, they're going to, same with Olympic lifting, need more specificity of the back squat, bench press, and deadlift. And different from the beginner, they're going to need increased training loads and intensities of these competition lifts to keep them improving. I think one thing that I've changed my mind on in powerlifting is the use of accessory lifts to get somebody stronger. I think they have their place in a training program, but I think for an intermediate, and especially an advanced lifter in powerlifting, they just need more practice on the back squat, bench press, and deadlift because they can accumulate training volume and intensity and increase their skill in those three lifts. I think if you get too far away from that specificity and focus too much on accessory lifts, that's going to limit their progress. Now an advanced lifter in powerlifting is again very similar to Olympic lifting, just needs a lot of specificity of the back squat, bench press, and deadlift. An advanced lifter in powerlifting might not see much, if any, any benefit from accessory exercises. Most of their strength gains, and at this point in their career, the strength gains are gonna be very small. Somebody might fight over a year for just a five pound increase on their bench press. And I think the advanced lifter needs, again, very a lot of specificity of the back squat, bench press, and deadlift. And most, 90% of their volume needs to come from those lifts or very um, just slight versions of those lifts. So that just might be like a, a double pause bench press instead of just a, your normal bench press. It might be a tempo bench press instead of your just competition bench press. But I think for these types of lifters in the advanced stage you need a lot of specificity. Okay, now let's talk about training Olympic lifting and powerlifting at the same time for the beginner. So this is somebody that is new to both sports or just relatively new to both sports. I think for the beginner, you're basically just merging the separate sports together. Um, a beginner in both needs broken down versions of the Olympic lifts, a lot of reps and technical practice of the back squat, bench press, and deadlift, and some of their training volume should still consist of just general um, accessory work that's going to help them be in shape and overall condition to increase training loads over time. And intermediate in powerlifting and Olympic lifting, or let me backtrack, Somebody, a beginner in Olympic lifting and powerlifting trying to do both sports, I would say need, needs about 30% of Olympic lifting practice and about 40% of powerlifting practice and, the, and then the rest being accessory work. Now an intermediate in powerlifting and Olympic lifting needs more specificity. I feel like I'm beating a dead drum here, but I think it's important. Needs more specific, specificity of the competition lifts. So I think their Olympic lifting should from the beginner should merge from broken down versions of the lifts to more practice of the full lifts in and of themselves. And I think from a powerlifting perspective, needs increased volume and intensity of those competition power, lifter, power lifts. So I think an intermediate program will consist 35 to 40% at the highest of Olympic lifting volume in their training program and probably 
45 to 50 percent of um, volume of the power lifts and then the rest 10 15 percent being accessory work an advanced lifter and so an advanced lifter trying to do Olympic lifting and power lifting is few and far between there's not a whole lot of lifters out there doing really great in both sports actually I can't really even name one I, I know someone Meg Scanlon is a really high level in powerlifting and is getting towards a high level in Olympic lifting better than most, but still I would um, hesitate to say at an advanced level. And the reason for this is if you want to be really great at one sport, you have to master that sport. You can't spend time merging different sports. You need all of your practice and focus into one sport. That's what's going to make you great. It's very hard to be great at two different things, but if you're just in it to have some fun and train both as the both aspects of each sport then more power to you enjoy yourself so if it comes to an advanced and power lifting and olympic lifting training at the same time again i think it's few and far between but just like the sports individually a lot of specificity because room for improvement at this stage is very small so and again it's very skill oriented in olympic lifting and even skill oriented in oriented in powerlifting, which I think most people kind of lose that idea. So somebody trying to be advanced or is at the advanced stage, stage in both, I think needs all, a lot of specificity in each sport and I would venture to say roughly 45 to 50% of Olympic lifting volume in their training program and 50, 55% of powerlifting training. Now I hope this helps in breaking down each sport and breaking down the sport into their levels and I hope it helps you kind of get an idea of kind of where your training should be focused depending on where you're at in each sport. Again, I think the key kind of takeaway here is to realize that these sports, much like other sports like tennis or golf, are actually skill dominated. So Olympic lifting is much like golf and tennis where you just have to practice the specific skill of the snatch and clean and jerk to get better at those lifts. And powerlifting is more strength dominant than Olympic lifting, but there's still a skill to back squatting, there's still a skill to bench pressing, and there's still a skill to deadlifting. Now, you can get away with crappy technique and pulling a heavy deadlift, but your progress is gonna be limited. So I think it's important to realize that powerlifting too is skill dominant, and to get better at the competition lifts, you have to practice those lifts.